Hello, everyone, and welcome to our January 18th Classroom 2.0 Live show. I'd like to welcome you all for taking time out of your Saturday to do this. Today, we're going to have Adam Bellow, who is uh, going to talk to us about EduClipper and EduTecker updates. Here is the link for the live binder for today. Notice that our tabs for the different websites are on the side rather than the top of the live binder. Peggy has put the, the link for the live binder into the chat. All of the archives and resources for the show are posted at this website. And you'll find the recordings for the uh, Illuminate recording the full recording plus the chat plus the just the sound all at this particular website. Here is where I'm going to ask you to choose that pointer that I'm using right now, this little blue arrow. I am located in central Pennsylvania. Uh, our other co-hosts today are Peggy George and Tammy Moore. I'm located in the middle of Pennsylvania. I know Peggy's in Phoenix, and Tammy is in southwest Arkansas. We have most people using the tool for the pointer showing us they're in the United States. Usually, we've got some international participants as well. We do have somebody in Argentina. Yeah, the, the, no matter what icon you choose, it overtakes more than one state, <laughs> usually, um, unless the country you're in is pretty big, and then you can locate it. I know my, my arrow takes up Pennsylvania, Maryland, and part of New York <laughs> when I use it. OK, here's our first poll question. I'm actually going to switch it so that it is a five choice polling type. Uh, remember, you're going to choose from the button next to the hand underneath your name in bold at the very top of the screen. What is your role in education? A, administrator, building district or region. B, teacher, instructor, professor. C, parent, leader. D, district campus technology leader. E, state provenance leaders, board member, or F other. And if since F is not one of the choices, um, you can type that in the list as Carolyn has done. And if it's more than one, of course, you can type that in the list as well. And once people have gotten a chance to vote on that, I will post those to the whiteboard to give Adam an idea of what our group is like. Most of you that voted are either a teacher, instructor, or professor. We do have some others, but over half fall in that category. So I'll clear that and go to the other polling type. Have you used EduTecker or EduClipper, either yes or no? And again, you can't vote with this. You've got to choose with the uh, check in the little box next to the hand underneath your name at the top. next to the hand raise. OK, I'll publish these. And most have not used EduTecker or EduClipper. Only 20% have from those that have voted. The next question is, do you use social bookmarking? to save and share web resources. Let me clear the last one before you vote on this one. Now you may vote on this one.
All right, I will post these as well. And it seems like more than half of the group does do this. Polling question three, do you use digital portfolios to capture your students' work? Again, yes or no? And again, I will post those to the whiteboard. And we're kind of split. About 29% have and 26% have not, with a good proportion not voting on this one. I would like again to introduce our special guest, Adam Bellow. And the topic today is Edu Clipper and Edu Tecker. Adam has been a teacher, a tech training specialist, a tech director, and is the founder of Edu Tecker and Edu Clipper. These free web tools have helped many people around the world learn about and use ed tech tools. He lives in New York with his wife and awesome kids. And Adam, I will ask the newbie question here and then turn the show over to you. So the newbie question is, what is social bookmarking? All right, so I guess that's my, uh, <laughs> is that my cue? OK, thanks, Peggy. <laughs> um, well, thank you guys so much for, for having me. And I'll get into that, I guess, a little, a little bit in a second. So um, we're going to talk today uh, a lot, actually, about EduClipper. And I realize you know, I spend most of my time working on this. And um, uh, hi, Carrie. Hi, everybody. Um, but I don't really share about it all that much. I mean, I share it at conferences once in a while, and I'll send out tweets. But I really wanted to you know, share what, what I'm building with EduClipper. And what EduClipper is, is in part social bookmarking. And you know, so I saw people say uh, in the chat that they use Digo and Delicious, and obviously we're using LiveFinders for the show. There's a lot of different bookmarking tools that you can choose from. But I think that really bookmarking kind of took on a whole new experience when you had the, um, you know, the site Pinterest come into popularity. And I think it, it introduced a whole new, uh, not generation necessarily, but a whole new crop of people to the concept of sharing and saving resources. Um, so social bookmarking is, is being able to uh, bookmark or save parts of the web, whether it be a, a, you know, an actual website or a clipping of something, um, and being able to share that with other people, other educators and other, um, and other students in the case of what we're building here. So I'm happy to, to kind of take it from there. And I'm, I'm just trying to keep up with the feed a little, <laughs> a little bit. But um, that's kind of you know, social bookmarking is being able to save resources and content and then share them. It's, uh, it, it's that simple. And we'll, we'll talk about some of the uh, in-depth pieces of that soon. So I guess since that's my cue, I'm, I'm going to advance the slides. Can I just get a yes if this went to the next slide? Awesome. Thanks. Uh, OK, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so first of all, it's really, really exciting for me to be back. Um, Peggy had actually asked me to come back on the show. I think it was in the summer months, but, but my timing just got messed up. And um, I'm very, very appreciative to, to be back and share with you guys today. I actually looked back. This is the, the <laughs> screenshot from when I first shared in 2010, which is, it seems like literally a lifetime ago. You know, it's, it's, uh, for me, it's almost several careers ago in, in based on what I've been doing. So August 2010, and I actually watched the webinar, listened to it the other day. And it was so funny that, to hear um, you know, what I was sharing that, that I was working on then. And I'll be sharing a little bit about that as well. So it's really good to be back. And, and I just want to say, before I get to, to this slide, I just want to say a sincere thanks to, to everyone in Classroom 2. I mean, we're, we're talking about people that are dedicating so much time, uh, so much time, and really creating a great experience. So, so everyone on, on the planning committee, you know, Tammy, Peggy, Laurie, Kim, and, and Steve, who's not with us, and I'm thinking about him today especially, um, I, I just thank you so much for, for making this possible. I don't always join the live shows. In fact, it's, it's seldom I'll get a Saturday afternoon to do that. But I do watch them uh, quite a bit, and as I'm sure many of you are either watching live or 
will will watch this recording. And and I just really respect the work you guys are doing, and thank you for doing it for so long. Um, so you know, it got me thinking. I, I've been very reflective this <laughs> this week, and um, yeah, Kim, I, that's I'm absolutely thinking about Steve and and uh, and his family. Um, but get, getting to do this show, it, it started me getting me thinking because I remember I started this. I feel like Classroom 2.0 in my in my way of thinking, you know, again four years ago, it was like a badge of honor for me because I had such respect for the show. It was one of those like, oh, I'm so excited I get to do it. So I was thinking back, and you know, I started my career. I was a classroom teacher, um, and this was me with my <laughs> one of my first groups of students. Um, actually. This was the uh, my my last full year in a classroom. So it was six years in a classroom. This was the last year, and uh, me and some of my goofy kids. <laughs> and um, I, I was an adjunct professor at Hunter College, which is where Edge uh, Edge started from. So, uh, of all ironies, I was actually asked to do a guest lecture yesterday at Hunter College. So I went back to the place where Edge was kind of born, so to speak, in 2007. Uh, and I got to guest lecture for three hours for these kids. Uh, kids, you know, it, it is weird. I'm sure many of you. <laughs> it's how quickly time passes. So I was giving a lecture to these students, and um, the, the, you know, irony of all ironies, I'm doing classroom 2 well today. I did this guest lecture yesterday, so it put me in a very reflective mood. Um, they also, the other irony for me and, and great joy is that they're using uh, the textbook, or they're using as a textbook, they're using uh, Untangling the Web, which is the book that, that Steve Dembo and myself had authored together. So. It, you know, it was very, uh, very cool to kind of have this moment. Uh, I also worked as a technology training specialist, and I worked as the uh, director of technology for the College Board Schools. And yes, it's that College Board that you probably remember from AP tests uh, for those of you in the states and and uh, SATs. Um, but I started thinking about my presentations, and the very first quote unquote big presentation that I did was getting an opportunity to present at NEC, uh, you know, ISTE, formerly NEC, in 2009. I had signed up because I had heard about you know uh, Steve Steve Hargan's uh, neck unplugged, and I remember being able to get up the gumption to go and do <laughs> this presentation. And I actually included a link if you feel like watching uh, a quick presentation about technology from five years ago or four years ago. Um, it it was just an amazing opportunity, and and you know I've had I've had a, a great deal of fun in the last few years. Um, I think this presentation, Tech Commandments, for those of you who haven't seen it, I included a link. It was kind of my, my I don't know, uh, it was a presentation that, that, that got spread around a lot and it, it really got me started into that public speaking space. Um, and, and most recently I was able to do a, a keynote at ISTE which was literally a dream come true. And um, you know, it's just amazing to think back five years ago I was presenting in the hallway, a crowded hallway at NECO 9 uh, in front of Steve and maybe 15 people. Uh, and now Angela Myers was there, and uh, and uh, I, I believe she had presented directly before me, and so she was there, and and you know she does great work, so it was intimidating to follow her, and uh, Dave David Warlick was also there talking with her after the presentation, so it was really you know again not to be too reflective, I know <laughs> too late. That's kind of the journey that I've been on. So again, being back at Hunter College yesterday, it was kind of amazing that that graduate school moment where I was teaching my. Um, my graduate course is where Edutecker started, and Edutecker started. It looked like this. It was created in iWeb, and um, I have to say that that iWeb was a terrible choice to build a website, but it was built for my graduate students, and it evolved. And, and you know, I worked on it for a very, very long time. And uh, oh, that's right, that's right. Paul and I met at at uh, ISTE in '09, and Edutecker grew. You know, it's a labor of love. It's definitely a, a uh, passionate uh, project that I that I still work on, and it, today it's it's providing lots of resources for teachers. It's uh, it's pretty amazing how many people still use that and find value in that. And you know, at the time, it, it follows in the work that that you know Kathy Schrock had led the way to do, and, and Steve Dembo had done, and Steve Hargan as well. And um, you know, Edutex came out around the same time as as Richard Burns' great site, Free Tech for Teachers, and now. There's just amazing, amazing educators making great things. So when I share my stuff, and I'll be focusing a lot on Edge, Edge Clipper today, but um, you know I have great respect for the amazing educators that that I um, you know that I that I get to keep the company of. And many of you who are on the chat as well. But uh, there's teachers just building and making great stuff. You know, for example, there's there's Ed Reach's Eduwins, uh, and Ed Reach itself as a media network. 
um, you know, as I mentioned, Richard and, and Steve Anderson and, and Tom Whitby. I mean, people that are sharing great content through blogs on a very, very constant basis. I, I just want to say, um, you know, I'll be sharing primarily about my, my own things today, but I really just have great respect for for all these wonderful things that uh, people are doing. And um, yeah, so that, that being said, as an aside, I just, you know, um, teachers do awesome stuff. And um, one of the things that I that I built into Edutecker since we last spoke about it four years ago, <laughs> it's funny how, how long ago this was, is we kind of built Edutecker into a social network. So those of you that haven't used it at all, um, we built this portion called the backpack where when you log in you get the ability to kind of save your favorites and take notes on tools and then connect one on one with, with teachers that are teaching similar subject areas. Um, it, it was a labor of love and I really built this out and, and spent a lot of time and energy kind of building a social network but the content was still based on whatever I was finding and putting into Edutecker. And you know, the only issue with that is, is you become the sole provider of content. And I think that you know, the times have changed and I was finding so much value in social that even though it was a social network around the content, um, it was still one person giving the, the, the content to others. And I kind of wanted to change that. We, we have apps for Edut uh, Edutecker. Um, the amazing thing about the Edutecker apps is we were the first education technology app to come out. And um, it, it, we, we launched, I think, in winter of 2009. And um, the most amazing thing about the app to me is that it's been downloaded over a million times, which is just mind-boggling um, to me, you know, that I was able to make something and share it with a million people. So that, that's really, that's always warmed my heart. And as I said before, you know, I am surrounded by brilliance. Um, the, there are from, from teachers that are in the classroom to principals. Um, you know, I know next week that there's no show, I believe, because it's Educon. And um, you, know, you want to talk about just brilliant minds getting together. You know, great respect for, for Chris Lehman and his staff of, of just amazing educators, each one. Um, just, just incredible. And what they do with their students, the respect they have for students and learning. So hopefully some of you will, will be there. And, um, you know, anyway, as I said, I'm, I'm surrounded by just, just amazing, amazing people that, that fuel me to do better things and, and go on and, and make stuff. And what happened was for, for Edge Clipper is I went to people and I said, what do you need? You know, I kind of was, was getting inchy to do something new. And I went to, um, you know, my PLN and I said, what, what can we make? And um, what, what, what do we need for kids? And so that's where kind of Edge Clipper was born from. And, um, you know, that, that's where the idea is. I, I think it's really important in the education technology space if you're in the process of building something that you build for a purpose. So that's what Educlipper was from. It started building um, for a, an audience that actually needed something. So the, the quick evolution, if, <laughs> if you would so call it that, um, is we built an alpha version or, uh, you know, in the, in the business, so to speak, they call it a minimum viable product. So we built a, uh, <laughs> we built this alpha version in 2012. I actually launched it at ISTE. And uh, it was a work in progress, as, as anything I think on the web is. And we worked very hard this year to launch the, the kind of beta version um, of Edge Clipper as it exists today on the website. And I'll be talking a lot about the website, but I'll be talking about the app as well, which is, which is really um, something I'm very proud of that, that's coming out this week. We have an app that launched about a month ago, and then we have a new app that's coming out this week with lots of great stuff, and I'm happy to share that. Um, before I share it, it's really important to know why I created Educlipper. Um, it's always nice to know motives around that. You know, I think that um, you know, there, there are lots of people in the edtech space that build things because they want to share and they want to help kids, but there's also a lot of people that build it because you know, it's an idea that they think is sexy or cool and um, that, that's not necessarily the right motive. So here are my motives for, for creating Educlipper and uh, I think that'll help. Social media is obviously incredibly powerful and we're all engaged in social media. I think that that's, um, you know, I, I think that, that that goes without saying. But in many schools we kind of take that away from kids, the power of social media. Um, we sometimes give them a, a quote unquote social experience. So if you think about um, tools that you may be using like, like LMSs in your, in your schools, they're wonderful tools but at the same point they're still containing the same students. It's, it's, digital four walls as opposed, to, um, as opposed to, to physical four walls. And I think social is really more about being able to connect teacher and student as, as learners together. So that's the beauty of social media. I think that's really, really important. Um, that there's no 
you know, we, we shouldn't have the, the teacher as the leader being in control of everything. Students can learn from other teachers and really it should look like this uh, because we all learn to and, and from each, with each other. I think that's really important to kind of uh, to, to kind of bring about. And I didn't see that happening in, in social in school. Um, there's amazing, amazing tools and, and I'm certainly not mentioning anything specifically, but um, you know, I, I think that our tools need to really allow teachers and students to learn with each other the same way we learn from each other. I know I learn a lot from students. I learn a lot from my own children that are, that are very young. <laughs> and I learn a lot from, from people that are in different positions. And I think that's kind of what I want from schools. The other reason I created EduCooper is that your best work should not end up here. I know that there's some of the best things I've done in school have been tossed into the garbage or are buried into my, my parents' <laughs> garage basement or whatever. Um, students really need to be able to, especially now with the great digital works that they create, it should be aggregated and kept in a place where they can get feedback and take it with them. Another reason, I guess reason number three if we're counting, is the fact that this is not valid feedback. Uh, you know, I was not a great test taker, but on top of that, even if I got an A+, looking back, I don't see growth. An A to an A plus doesn't explain to me what I did or how I did it better. And uh, you know, EduClipper is kind of uh, taking aim at creating a more holistic form of assessment. And this is the last reason um, that I created it is I have two kids who I care obviously greatly about. Um, it'd be kind of weird if I didn't, right? Uh, and they're really cute. So I threw that picture in of them. And uh, thanks, Paula. <laughs> and um, you know, it, it's for them that I think this is the world that my son is in school and, and I watch worksheet after worksheet come home. Um, this is his clever solution on the left-hand side as to how to do, uh, how, to, how to bypass some homework woes. But uh, you know, a lot of the, the work that comes home is just boring and meaningless. And you know, at the end of the day, I want them to be able to create and celebrate their, their, their creativity, their creations, and get real feedback. So, you know, education does not come in a box. You know, this does not help students. Um, it's neat and tidy, but it's not really learning. And I want to celebrate really learning. So there we go. So that's the why. And I think that's really important. So hopefully, um, you know, that, that kind of makes sense. I'm looking at, <laughs> I'm looking at the, uh, the feedback over here. Yeah, the homework helper is fun. And uh, don't they know they have the Bellow Kid in class? Well, I did give a copy of the book to the teacher. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so that's, uh, that, that's kind of the why. Let's take a look. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through pretty quickly, I'm going to go through what EduClipper does. And then what I really want to showcase is the, the app. Um, I really want to showcase that to you because I think it's really the vision as to what um, we can do with students and what I'm most proud of uh, having created. But, but I will go through everything. So EduClipper is free. Um, you register on EduClipper.net or on the app. Um, we're going to go through the site real fast, and I will talk quickly as I as I intend to do. Um, you know, Peggy was asking for the slides last night. I spent uh, I was up to like almost one o'clock, I guess, doing I don't know 150 slides, <laughs> which I'll probably never use again. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through them pretty quick. Uh, <laughs> um, and Peggy was up very late as well, which <laughs> thank you, Peggy. <laughs> um, so you register online at EduClipper.net, and I know people look at it and they you know associate what it looks like, and they say, oh. It's Pinterest, but it's really much, much deeper. And, um, and I really think it's important that I kind of showcase the differences. Nothing wrong with Pinterest, but let's, let's go through some of the features. Uh, I'm not going to read this list to you. Uh, as many of you know, I don't, I don't read information off of slides, but there's a lot of stuff that kind of sets us apart from just a curation tool. The first of which is you can sign up as a teacher or a student. So you can select if you're a teacher, register, and then create classes. Uh, if you're a student, you can register through a course code or students can register independently of their teacher because as I said before, I think it's important to let students go onto a learning network and not be uh, shut out because they're, you know, they haven't heard of it yet or ha haven't had their teacher rather uh, you know, push it on them. Uh, really quickly, the anatomy of an EduClip. So when we, each of our pieces of content, we call them EduClips. And uh, each clip on the upper right-hand corner has an icon. If that link icon appears, the, uh, the pink one, that's showing you it's a web link. If it's a video, it's a video. If it's a document, it's a document, and so forth. Um, uh, so Patty, there's no age limit. They need parental consent, but as long as you have that, there is no age limit. Um, and, and we have a whole bunch of safety features in, involved in having them provide proof for their age in terms of uh, you know, the, what grade you're in, et cetera. So, um, so the clip over here, it shows you who created it, when it was created, what it is, and I'll take you through a, if, you, if you mouse over on that clip, you'll get this bar pop up, which are those four, uh, five icons on the bottom. 
And they stand for reclip, share, like, comment, and flag. And I'll go through that real quick. Reclipping, as many of you are familiar with repinning from Pinterest, it is to basically copy a piece of work and add it to one of your clipboards, which is a collection of your resources. You can change the title, description, add different tags, and choose which clipboard to put it on. So it's like saving it for yourself. Sharing. So sharing is really important for me. Um, I know a lot of people have actually stepped away from, from other social networks they were using and like to still have a presence there. So they share back to, for example, Pinterest. A lot of folks are, are clipping onto EduClipper for their kids and then sometimes sharing stuff back to Pinterest to share with other teachers. And um, it's integrated, you know, uh, Paula said she loves it's integrated with Edmodo. It is Edmodo, Tumblr, Google+, all the social suspects are there. Um, we also offer embedding, so you can embed boards or embed individual clips into a blog or classroom. And the best feature, I think, is the share to groups, which is, I'll go back one second, is this icon over here, which is the, uh, the, the groups of, of folks. And sharing to a group allows you to differentiate instruction. You can create a group of learners um, that's different. So not every single kid in your class is getting the same resources. If you need to give students that were, let's say, absent, you can give them the resources they missed, or you can give students that are, uh, you know, need a little enrichment, you can kind of go and give that to the students there, and you can give students that need remediation uh, different resources. It's really simple to kind of drag and drop these different feature, uh, different uh, pieces of content to the, the learners that need it. Flagging. You know, as teachers, we really want to know um, about what, what the concept of flagging is. So if there's something that's inappropriate on site or a copyright violation, you can flag it. And people say, okay, well, what happens then? You know, like what, what does it do? Does it just erase it? What happens is if a teacher wants to be notified? So we created a whole system. Um, a student or a teacher would be notified that their content was flagged and they can go to the content. This is a, a picture of the email. They will go to the content and it reminds them about terms of service and whatever. You can edit it by taking it off or removing it or swapping out the clip. But the teacher gets this email. And this email allows them to, to say, this person's uh, content has been reported. You can go over and view it and see if the student has appealed the, the, um, the flag or the teacher can override it and delete it and send a message to the student as to why it was deleted. So there's ability and, and everything is soft deleted, meaning that you know, as, as we want to be web compliant and SOPA, you know, COPA and, and SIPA compliant, we save records of everything. So if students are posting things uh, and then deleting them, we still have them. So don't, don't worry about that. Uh, someone asked, I, I see in the feed, does it work with Schoology? Not yet, but it will. So we're working on that as well. Um, there's a lot of great, you know, I, I like to always say our roadmap is 10 miles long. <laughs> and uh, it, it's hard to work with. Moodle, now you're asking for everything. So yes, we're, we're looking into all of the different uh, tools. We're looking into uh, Schoology. Uh, we're looking at Moodle. We're looking at some other integrations as well. Um, you know, it, we're developing more of our tool now. And then I think we're going we're gonna to branch out and kind of, uh, you know, get the tentacles into, into other places as well. Uh, Edmodo was our first one. Uh, we, we have a good relationship with the, with the folks at Edmodo. And we're obviously um, love other tools as well and want to want to be uh, for, for all kids. So, um, so back, back to some of the details. So when you click on any of our edge clips, you bring up this detail view and you can follow the clip creator, see if they have other edge clips or boards that have had that content clipped to. Um, you also see that there's that same thing for reclipping, sharing, liking. We also have citations. So the citation will allow you to um, see where the content has come from. We integrate with EasyDiv, and we're actually updating some of that code right now. But when you click on citation, it will give you the, uh, the, the actual appropriate citation for where it came from. You can add, um, uh, as you see over there, you can add tags, you can add comments, etc. Um, so adding content, and that I think is really cool. Uh, if I want to make my site an EduClip, I need to pay for the domain. If I want to make my site an EduClip, I need to pay for the domain. Uh, no. Uh, it's a free service for, for now, so um, the, the domain, we don't offer like customized domains. That might be something we'll do later on, but uh, I was just answering the, the, <laughs> the question in, in the yeah, feed. Um, so adding content, that's really important. How do you make content? Well, that little plus sign in the upper right-hand corner of the screen allows you to bring out the, the ad box. And the ad box allows you to add content in a number of ways. Adding an edge clip. You can add an edge clip from the web, which is this first icon over here, this little uh, uh, computer monitor. You can add a content through, uh, I'm sorry, that's my computer. You can drag files from your computer, either drag them to the box or select them. 
you can add content from the web, which means you could either uh, put in a URL or you could put in a uh, embed code from, from anything that's, that's a safe spot. We also blacklist uh, or, or ban uh, inappropriate content, um, such as adult content and, and hate speech and stuff like that. So uh, kids won't be doing that. But you could put a Prezi in there. You could put a, you know, a Globster in there. You could put all sorts of things as embed code, YouTube videos, etc. And we currently integrate with Drive as well. So you can actually, um, let's see, you can actually come over here and do uh, Google Drive content. So you can go over and, um, and, and put in anything from your Drive. And we're adding Dropbox. The web, uh, the, the, the uh, mobile app already has Dropbox in, involved in it as well. Can you email links to EduClipper? So you can't email links to it, but you can email links from it. Uh, I don't know if that answers that, that question. Um, so basically, again, you can clip anything. So what files do we take? We take URLs, Word docs, PowerPoints, Excel, PDFs, uh, videos, images, Dropbox, Drive, and embed code. So it really is a very, very wide array of content that you're, that you're able to kind of store with us. And over here you would add a title, you would add a description, tags if you want, and then choose what clipboard to, to add it to of your own. And the other way to get content in is our bookmarklet tool, which we've been working to update. So we have this ability to drag a bookmarklet uh, tool to your, to your browser. We support all the browsers, including IE. Yes, that's uh, everyone's favorite one. Um, works best in Chrome. Once you log into our bookmarklet tool, you click on it at a website like Edutopia, which is a phenomenal resource. Um, it would allow you to do three things. One is EduClip it, which is the ability to kind of hover your mouse over any of the pieces of content and I'll dynamically pick out pieces of, of content for you. Uh, so Roxanne, there's no clipboard storage limits right now. Um, for video, we actually, uh, there is a limit of 20 megabytes per video, but uh, for, for everything else, it's uh, you know, wide open. Um, bookmark it is meaning that you bookmark the entire page, and the text, you actually highlight text on any website, and then click on that little T over here, and you wind up getting um, that text brought in and, and clipped over there. And uh, yeah, you can also clip to uh, live minders. So you can, you can clip anywhere. And this is what it looks like. It would bring in a piece of content, gives it a title, it actually takes the title from the website, takes the URL, but you could change the description, you could tag it, you could make it private or public, add it to different clips and boards, and that's basically uh, the way you have it. So organizing the content. One of the things we do is creating clipboards. So you can actually take your edge clips and put them into a clipboard collection. Clipboards are very simply that. It looks like a clipboard and it has all the clips that you've stored onto it. But one of the cool things we have is a collaborative clipboard. So that's a way to kind of like it's Google Docs interesting uh, mix. You can add students in groups or you can add friends. So as teachers, you can actually invite other teachers and start curating the web together. But now you could also do it with students, like make different groups and say you work on this clipboard and then other teachers work on the other clipboards. And that looks like um, you get an invitation. So the students get an invitation. They, we have insight notifications and all that stuff, but you kind of get this email saying, click here to collaborate on this math tools website. And um, I thought I had a, a shot of that. Oh, here it is. So here's a shot of the, um, of the collaborative board. What happens is, is you now have two users over here. So it's myself and David. David's clipped this. When I click something, it'll show up in green. So the way it works is that uh, the colors uh, signified over here on the left are they going to be the color surrounding each of those particular clips? And um, kids with no emails. We, we actually, we had that working for a while, then we had to change something, but we'll be going back to having no emails for students. Um, so teachers can create accounts for the students with no emails, but students can't sign up without an email on their own. So that's, that's the rule. Teachers can create accounts, students can sign in with their course code, but students, um, uh, if they want to sign up on their own, they would need to have uh, an email. Um, Sort of everything. Not everything, but, but a lot of stuff. <laughs> All right, so presentation portfolios. This is kind of the newest functionality that we have over here. And uh, it's really pretty cool is that you can create, uh, of your clips, you can make a presentation portfolio. So there's two types of portfolios that we have. The first is this presentation one or personal portfolio. Make a title, give it a description, and then start adding content. Um, I'm actually going to come back to that in a second. Um, one last feature that I really like that, that uh, you know, is one of those fun things, you can actually take a clip and drag it to the bottom and this thing called the quick board will pop up and that quick board is basically quick access to your uh, clipboards. So you can kind of, as you're browsing the home screen and you could filter it by you know, different file types and whatever, you can drag down pieces of content, you'll see it's kind of ghosted over here and you can drop it into, um, and you can drop it into the, uh, the, the quick board on the bottom or change the, the clipboard. As you can see, there's cool stuff and iPad materials. I can switch over to cool stuff and drag it down there if I wanted to. 
Okay, so getting back to the portfolios. Um, this is our presentation portfolio. What I really, again, this, this speaks directly to the idea of, of stuff should not end up in the trash or garbage. What students dream, create, and share really does not matter. And um, you know, this is a, a fun way, and we are enhancing this all the time, to create content in a portfolio manner. So on the right-hand side of the portfolio uh, is the clips that they are going to be adding. Notice that there are three clips there, plus there is a button that says add a new edge clip. You can add any piece of content you want, or take any of the content on the left-hand side that you have already created and drag it over. And so you can have that, um, you can have that uh, added to the portfolio which looks something like this. This is kind of a, a one with a uh, paper background and uh, one of our standard layouts. And this is what it looks like when I'm logged in. When you are when you're not logged in, you don't get the option to edit it. So it's a, it's a nice uh, a whole bunch of features. Um, this is the editing mode, so I can kind of change it around. I can drag these clips from one area to another, change the background, uh, publish social features or not. And lots, of, uh, lots of really cool stuff on, on that as well. And let's see. And this is the presentation view. So um, you can actually step through these very much like a live binder or, or you know, something to that effect where you can kind of go through uh, one clip. You know, you, there's an arrow over here and you just go through clip by clip. So it's an easy way for students to do parent, uh, you know, student led parent teacher conferences or for students to kind of review the work that they've done. And um, other basic features. On the upper right hand side is the uh, avatar. When you click on that wheel, you get things like profile, settings, classes, notifications, and log off. And yes, teachers can comment on, on portfolios. And in fact, teachers on the class portfolios, I'll show you in a minute, you'll actually be able to um, record audio, video, and uh, comment and do badges and grades as well. So our search lets you search for clips, boards, or users. Kind of again, like a very, very brief overview of everything. Um, this is what a profile page looks like. You can access your stuff, the stuff you like, the things your people you're connected to, shared content. Um, you can see who shared it with you and, and, and who you shared stuff to. You can get to your classes pretty quickly and get to your assignments, which is our newest feature, and we'll talk about that later. Um, here's all the connections, and you can kind of see who you're following, see who's following you. Now, following, a quick note on that, really safe because you can't send private messages. Following basically means you're just tapped into their content stream. So teachers and students can follow each other and learn from each other, but it's not going to be something where you, you have to worry about um, you know, uh, personal interaction. You can comment, of course, but it's seen by the general public. Um, Windows Phone. Um, it, we're, we're thinking about it. <laughs> There's a lot of things on that list. And yes, it is iOS 7 uh, as the app uh, operating system. This is a settings page. You can actually choose which subjects you're interested in seeing on the home page. So your screen will actually show you all subjects. Or if you like just wanting to see the art or ESL or whatever, it will just show you those clips. And you give uh, information about yourself, change your password, etc., all that good stuff. And we also launched this classes portfolio. So the classes um, look like this. You can create these, uh, these little tiles. Click on the plus sign to create a new class. You can add your students to it through course code or whatnot. Um, and then it shows you over here how many assignments are given out to your students. You can edit all the details, permissions. Uh, I'll show you the permissions real quick. So we made it really, the teacher can control what, what goes on in the class. You can have um, approval for edge clips or not. You can have the clips being able to be created privately or not. Uh, they can upload their own picture or not. By default we have um, you know, under 16, they, ha they have stock photos that they can choose from. Um, they can comment, they can invite. So you'll notice there's a lot of settings over here because we do have kindergarten classes that are using this. And you know, that for me is really exciting as my son's in kindergarten. But we, we also have um, some settings where you can make it a little wider open for you know, high school students and whatnot. Teachers can create assignments and assignments are pretty easy to, to create and then share out. Um, so I just saw a question, can the student transfer clips to a personal account? So there, there's no need for them to transfer. They, they don't, um, students are, are controlled by teachers, but after the teachers you know, uh, click off that they're out of the class, they are just based, uh, their, their level of permission is based on their age, which we assume from their grade. So if they're in 12th grade and beyond, they just keep their, keep their account, they just don't have the teacher moderation flow. So yes, the students, all their work is theirs. Um, we intentionally wanted to make it so that students don't have to like, um, you know, that this stuff has a home for them afterwards. So creating an assignment. So give it an assignment name, give it a description, give it a start date and a due date if you'd like. You can choose over here the permissions uh, for feedback, um, meaning that the students will be able to kind of give each other feedback. 
uh, students will be able to uh, get feedback from their other peers. And um, video feedback, audio feedback, or text feedback. Of course, as a teacher, you might not want all the kids, if they're in sixth grade and goofy, you don't want all of them making videos, perhaps. So you can kind of use those as you, as you wish. This adds to my collection as a new feature we're launching where teachers can actually uh, post their, their um, assignments to a communal uh, assignment library. And then you can very easily go through and um, you know, kind of uh, take someone else's assignment and then tweak it. So you can take out different clips and add different things or, or you know, make it more appropriate for your students. And uh, that over here on the bottom is this make this assignment public for other teachers. Students don't, don't have access to that, but, but teachers do. And we're adding abilities to kind of sort and search through those assignments as well. On the student side of things, this is what they would see. They would see, you know, they get an email saying you have an assignment or there's reminders that come in when the assignment's close to being due. Um, they would see that in their portfolio, they have an assignment over here and they have the ability to add submissions. They'll see when it's due. And if you've given feedback on it, you'll get a grade or a badge or notice that there's other types of feedback. And uh, the students would, go, you know, if they're going to complete an assignment, this, this could be the, the task. You could have this uh, to do. This would be like instructions for them. And you could attach those content pieces. So this could be a rubric. This could be a website, et cetera. And the students could come over here and um, put in their response. They can give it a title, description, and of course add content, whether it be creating a new clip or attaching an old clip. And the portfolios look like this. So it's a very, you know, it's not as, as uh, designable, but a class portfolio is very simple over here. When the student looks at their portfolio, they see the feedback from the teacher. Um, they would see over here that they need to add an answer to this assignment. And once they add the answer, it swaps with the content that they've created as the answer, if, uh, if you're following that. Students looking at their work, they kind of see over here their feedback. Uh, badges, if they, if they thumbnail over it, they would, see, um, they would see what the badge looks like. And the other thing is that uh, the feedback on the bottom is that they also can give audio feedback back to the teacher so they can have a dialogue around the content. If the student wanted to further explain something or uh, you know, or, or had a question for the teacher on the, on the feedback they assigned. They can also sort very easily by, you know, what's upcoming, what's to do, what's turned in, et cetera, so that it's easy. You can kind of filter out if you get a lot of assignments. We do have notifications. So we have, uh, you know, insight notifications. If students don't have email, that's where they'll see things. When they log in, it'll pop up and it'll, it'll tell them stuff. Um, we also have, um, we also have uh, you know, the app will have push notifications. Um, it's not, I, I see people in the feed, and Peggy, I know <laughs> you said not to worry about the feed, but it just pops up, but I, I can't help it. Um, we don't have a, an Android app yet, but we are working on that as well. So notifications, you can manage all the notifications, uh, what you want to get push notifications on, what you don't want. We're adding SMS pretty shortly, so you'll get a text for those kids that don't have uh, email. They might want to get text messages and whatnot. Um, so we really try to give you a lot of options to make, um, to, to make this accessible to folks. Um, we do have the Edmodo app, which is free. Um, it was actually rated by Edmodo as their editor's pick for the year uh, as the number one app, which is, which is really exciting for us. Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's been really used. Thank you. Uh, it, it's been really well uh, received by that community as well. And then let's see. Uh, we do have the Google Apps for Education, where you can add that through Google, and the iPad app. And that's what I really want to focus on for the next you know, 15 minutes or so, is talk about the iPad app. Because I think the website has, has issues in terms of, uh, uh, you know, there are some things that are just not working perfectly yet, and I think that's just the business of, of building, um, you know, building tools. But, but we're really, the app is a, is a vision that I think is coming to fruition very, very quickly, and I want to share it with you. So this is, uh, this is the moment I'm going to share my screen. We'll see how this works, um, and I, hopefully this will, this will go well. This is a, a world premiere, as it were. Um, I haven't really shared the new version of the app with anyone publicly yet, so excited to do that. Um, let me share my screen and share desktop, share. Okay, and then if you guys can tell me if you see this, do you? Then, okay, awesome. So I'm going to make this full screen. And I'll show you the new app. And here we go. So this is the new version. When you're first met with it, it'll kind of give you a walkthrough. It'll show you the assignments page. It'll show you the, uh, the audio feedback page. It'll show you, you know, like a little tutorial. I'll skip through some of this because you get me. Um, so I'm going to go to sign in over here. I'm going to sign in with Facebook. 
And when you load the page, this is the content that's coming out. So this is a really fun and easy way to kind of sort through all the great stuff that people are clipping. Um, we have a lot of the same functionality. So one of my favorite features on the website, I talked briefly about is the, clip, uh, the clickboard, which is on the left-hand side. If I want to reclip something, I can click on the little icon over here on the upper right corner of the clips, and it thumbs out. I get the reclip button. I get the share button. So if I click on share, I can share this to any of those folks. Um, or I can go and, and like it. Uh, we kind of took from Instagram the idea of double tapping, and you like it just by double tapping on something. And if I like something, I take two fingers and drag it over to this clipboard, which allows me to reclip it. So it lets me reclip it. I could change the, the, um, the title of the description. I could give it a tag. And I can choose a clipboard of mine to, to kind of add it to. So I'm testing that. And I'm going to go to reclip. And now it will be reclipped onto the page. So some of the other things that uh, I wanted to show you real quick on this is on the left-hand side is the search. So I can easily filter this between portfolios, clips, boards. If I want just movies, I can click on the video button over here, and it will bring up all the videos that, uh, that have been put on the app. Um, if I want, I can come over and search by uh, subject type, you know, tag. So I can type in something like science and, and have it search for just clips that are related to science in, in that field. But uh, I'm actually going to cancel that for now. Um, on the right-hand side is the menu wheel. So it pops out, and uh, it would give you your notifications over here. It would give you um, things like your profile, where you can then see all of your age clips, your boards, your portfolio, etc. And clipboards, you know, again, the concept over here is we, we've included everything we have on the site. So we have the idea of you, you being able to have collaborative boards. I'm going to go on to one of my boards that are collaborative. And over here, you can see that, that myself and another user have been, have been testing content. And so uh, we, we have content that's coming up over here from this user, and I could take a look at that as well as content from myself. I'd be able to see my connections and, and look at all their content as well. There's settings, you know, again, like the same controls. I can connect to other people using the app. I can connect through Facebook and see who's, who's using the things. I can set up my, my notifications so you can kind of just invite friends through Facebook. I can set up my notifications and change the way I want to be notified about certain things. Uh, we just added push notifications in the app, so they'll kind of pop up and let you know if you're not in the app what's going on. And the biggest, you know, the, the best feature I think is, is this idea of classes, where you can kind of come in and, and create your virtual class and give assignments. So I can click on it, look at my assignments, see all the students in my class. I can easily add students, and uh, you know, if you wanted to add a some one of your followers as a student for class, like as a guest, you could do that. I can go over to my portfolio. So this will kind of show you that there's two views to portfolio. Um, it will show you how to look at a case assignment, and I will show you how to get feedback. So real quick over here, um, this is the grid view, and this kind of gives you, as a teacher, you get the thumbnail view of who hasn't done it yet, what's late, and who many, how many people have completed it. There is also the edit button, which lets you edit the assignments. Each of these are, are an assignment in the portfolio. I can click over here to look at the, the kind of thumbnail view of the portfolio. Go back to the grid. This one has uh, one completed. So I'm going to look at that, and I want to take a look at what the student has done as the assignment. I apologize yes. for interrupting you, but the technology is not quite keeping up with you. And so ah, the screen right. isn't fully loading for us as fast as it is for you. So if you could just slow down a little bit on the screen here, sure. that would be awesome. Thanks. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I knew I was too fast for my own technology. Um, so. I, this is a student roster, and it shows me that this student has completed it. And I'll just show it to you because the student has a grade, but I'm going to um, show you what it looks like. I, I'm hoping that by now it's caught up and you see the task, the student's project, and I can show you some of the um, features over here. Some of which is the fact I can set the grade. I can give them a traditional grade. But really more meaningfully, as I mentioned before, is that you can give things like a badge. So I can come over here and give them, let's say, the light bulb, and it pops up. I could write nice idea and save that as a badge for that student. I could also come over here and give them text feedback if I wanted to, or record audio or even video. So, um, so there's a lot of ways to give feedback to students. And they would see that in the feed over here. They would see their video, or they would see the audio that you've recorded for them. You'd also be able to see the assignment itself uh, if you click on those, those tabs above. So for that class, again, the details you can change uh, you know, and go through and, and, and 
give them whatever whatever details you want, as well as the permissions per class. And um, you know that'll that'll kind of let you kind of have the right control over uh, what you want going on in your classroom. Hopefully, I've slowed down sufficiently. <laughs> um, easy to add classes. Really simple to just create a class code. Once you do that, you'll have a code over here. It says group course code. They enter that in the app when they sign up, and they're added to your to your uh, class. Or they could do it through the class pages if they're using this with more than one class. And like like tools like Envato and other tools, you can shuffle the course code if someone gets it, or lock it if you don't want to have anyone else added to that course. Um, the portfolio feature is is one of my favorite features. So. Over here, we have the same abilities to, to create these presentation portfolios. I go to edit. Now you'll see them jiggling. I can actually take things and drag and drop so that they swap places on the board. I can go over and um, change the way this looks, the layout over here, just by tapping on different uh, toggles on the top screen. Change the theme and the background just by tapping over here as well. And um, then, of course, save it. So it's a really quick and easy way to kind of make your portfolio more um, more personalized. And we'll be adding a bunch of options in that space as well later. Um, creating content on the app is, is by far my favorite thing to look at. And that's from this lower left-hand corner. I click on the plus sign. And I can click on the create a clip. Adding clips, you can get them from the camera, the web, Drive, Dropbox. I'm going to show you the web because it'll show me. It'll let me show you two things. One is that we use an in-app bookmarklet and an in-app browser. So that means if you're on the school's internet and you're filtered, that this will be the same filtered internet that you get from your school, um, which makes it obviously safe for your students to kind of use. It doesn't doesn't use anything other than what you're connected to. So if I went to a site like classroom20.com. It will load that within my browser. And if I wanted to, if you notice on the upper right hand corner, there's three icons. Uh, I can click help and it will actually help us figure these out. One is that the clipping icon lets me actually capture a self-selected piece of a website. The bookmark icon lets me um, bookmark the entire page. Or the text icon lets me bookmark just text that I highlight. So I'll quickly show you how to do the screen selection. I click on this first icon. And now I'm literally dragging a little in-app um, selector over. And I'm just going to grab the, the Classroom 2.0 logo and go to Save. And it lets me bring up this annotation screen. So I can actually now, this works with our photos as well. So if you take a photo of a project you make in school, you can annotate on top of it. And it's a great way to kind of lay out uh, you know, what you've done and call out different things. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to Circle Classroom. I can type on it. I can add the word rocks. Uh, of course, I could change the font color and all that good stuff, drag this box around. Um, I can add arrows. So if I want to use the, the light blue and make an arrow, I can. You get the idea. You can draw. You know, very, very simple to, to do that. Um, just going to draw some dots for the sake of time. And uh, now I'm going to go, there's an eraser, there's uh, you know, revert and trash. And I'm just going to go to save image. And this now will become an edge clip. So I can title it, describe it, tag it, etc. I'm not going to save that just to uh, <laughs> save us from the home page. But again, we've really built in a, a pretty full featured experience here. You can look at the t uh, pieces of content. You can actually follow users just by you know, tapping on the little plus sign. You can view content full screen by clicking on the I. It will load any of the content full screen for you. So again, with that in-app browser, just exit to leave. We do have the full flagging system involved. We do have the ability to like things, again, as I said, by double tapping or by just uh, clicking on any of the hearts. The ability to share. That's the last thing I'll show you real quick is you can share again to any of those social places, but you also could share within Edge Clipper. And it loads all of your contacts. You can really easily quickly go through, choose contacts or choose groups. Go through and find your followers, people that you're following, classes that you've created. So if I wanted to share with an entire class, I can click on it. And I could easily, a lot of these classes are actually empty. So I can click on one of these classes, find the users within the class, and then be able to share to them very simply, as well as other test groups that I've created 
So I'm going to test share to these three users, go to share, and now they're going to get a notification about it as well. So I'm really excited about that. I think that, that you know, um, the presentation portfolio, the class portfolio, over here just showing you I can go to test to make a new portfolio. This is a great way for students to kind of showcase the best things they're doing. Um, you choose one of those templates, the themes. So go to save and add, and this is the way they would add content. And uh, you know, again, it's really easy to add content here. You press on the plus, it'll load your content that you've created. You just tap on those and they'll get added to the board. You can also make a new piece of content right from here. I'm going to add it to the portfolio, and there it is. And I can kind of just easily swap places with these things and uh, go to save that and publish it, allow it to be public or private, um, allow commenting on it, etc. And it really is, is a great, I think it's a great tool for students to, to showcase their learning and to use as a digital portfolio. So I'm going to end the screen share there. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of feed stuff going on, but uh, let's see. And we are back. Stop screen share. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think we're actually close to time, right? I mean, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to keep everyone forever. <laughs> this is this is the slides over here. Oh, that that's actually the one last thing I wanted to share with you is that. Um, so we created this this app, and the new app comes out. Um, this week. So Apple's reviewing it as we speak, hopefully. Um, their review process is always kind of interesting, but uh, you know, I'm assuming it'll be fine and we'll, we'll release it this week, which is kind of cool. And we've been working very, very hard on the website because I think the app has superseded the website in many, many ways. Uh, stability, speed, uh, look and feel, and whatnot. But we've been working on redesigning the website. We just haven't told anyone that yet. Um, so these are some of the new avatars that kids will be able to choose from and customize. And um, this is the new website. This is some of the screenshots from, from what we're building with the website. So you'll notice it's going to have a very, very similar look and feel to, um, to really be able to, to uh, you know, catch up, I think, to the look and design and, and feel of the, uh, you know, of the app version that we have. And it will, again, allow, allow that same visual feedback, the, the badging, the grades, et cetera, that, uh, that we've added, as well as the assignment sharing which is uh, something that I think that a lot of people are looking forward to. Uh, so this is the new class design pages. So it's going to be a lot of fun to, to kind of see this grow and, um, and, and, and get out there. And uh, so that's, that's the EduClipper app. And I see there was a lot of questions that I probably missed. <laughs> so um, I guess that's it for me sharing about EduClipper. And I will be happy to answer any and all questions. So thank you guys so much for listening and, and hanging out. It really, it's, it's great to be on a Saturday with educators that just want to learn more so that they can benefit themselves and their students. And I really just, just greatly appreciate the work that you guys do. And, and I call many of you friends, and I, I have great respect for, for not only what the Classroom 2.0 folks are doing, but everyone else that joined us. So thanks so much. I did capture some questions that Adam did not answer during his presentation, so I will go to those. Most of them you already have answered. <laughs> What's the privacy for student portfolios? So that's up to the student, and it's also up to the teacher. Um, teachers can, for class portfolios, um, teachers control when the student work goes public. Uh, the reason we did that is because we want to make sure that students, you know, if you're all doing a similar assignment, you don't necessarily want your students' work to, um, to be public by all the other students. Uh, you can, but you, you might not want to, so the teachers control that. Um, however, if it's a personal portfolio, it is up to the user to decide whether it's public or private. Okay, let me go to my next one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm scrolling through many, and a lot of them I've got X'd out. Uh, so if a student creates something on an iPad app and saves it to the camera roll, can they upload it to the EduClipper app from there? Yes, they can. We have, um, we have camera and we have camera roll as, as options for adding content. 
right, is there only one permission set for a class, or can you different differentiate permissions from the you teacher? Definitely design? can differentiate permissions. That's that's <laughs> you set it, and the easiest way to do it is set it for a class. But then, of mm -hmm. course, if little Johnny is doing something you don't want little Johnny to do, you can you can scale back or allow different permissions for that student or multiple students. Great. Is there a category for gifted and talented? Um, the, there's as much content on there. We don't we don't control the content. Mm -hmm. So the content, um, I guarantee you, there's there's content for gifted and talented. And if not, who's ever asking that that does awesome work should be sharing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. This this is from Maureen. My biggest decision on all this sort of stuff is: Do I set up? That, do I set them up as one account for all the teachers at the school or separate for each teacher or something else? If I do not set up and do a lot of hand holding, it does not happen. Teachers are too busy. They won't they won't use it. So yeah, I think the best that's, way to set it up. Yeah, the best way to set it up is to have teachers set it up. Um, for right now, is to have each teacher set it up because I think a, they get familiarity with the app. It's not hard to set it up. You just go mm -hmm. to, you know, and there's tutorials online about how to set up a class. It's, it's pretty simple on the app in particular. Mm -hmm. um, the website allows you to kind of upload a roster, um, something we haven't had on the app yet. But um, yeah, I definitely would say, you know, teachers taking a little bit of ownership of our, I know of course there are times where teachers want it done for them. We're launching um, some administrator tools in the next few months that will make it much easier for someone in an admin role to kind of set it up for the entire district or school. Thanks. Someone couldn't find it, the, the app in the Google Play Store on their Nexus. Well, they've, they've been looking for a long time. It's not, it's not out yet. It's um, not out yet. No, so the, the Android app has, the development is just in that planning phase. Mm -hmm. we, we chose to do iPad first, um, but we are obviously um, planning for an Android app. I, uh, I always blame and credit Tom Whitby for uh, it is because of him that EduClipper came out on Android. <laughs> I was at a conference in 2009 and they shared it with him. And he said, look, that does me no good. I don't have, a, I don't have an iPhone. <laughs> so that's why we developed it. So I, I definitely am aware that there's many, many people in the Android camps that want it there. And I will be, be sure to, uh, to, to bring, that <laughs> bring that to market as soon as we can. Okay. Is there a difference between apps for EduTecker and EduClipper or are they the same? No, they're completely different. So EduTecker is the backpack app that came out, um, I think it came out in 2011 or 12 as we did the last update for it. Um, and this is, this is the, the new app. EduClipper is the you know, completely different entity. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what we've been working on, totally different app. Can a retired educator sign up? Sure. Uh, this, this for free, this teacher is still in contact with school colleagues. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we, we make sure there's no, um, you don't need like a, an EDU address to log mm -hmm. in. Um, we, we've only had one case where someone was working, you know, was using the app for, for what I thought was just a bizarre purpose. And I, and I reached out and, and asked them what was going on. It was a business that was trying to, they figured, oh, this has some traffic and <laughs> a lot of people going to it. Let's advertise uh, it. So yeah. we, we had to ban their account. But uh, right. Of course, anyone who's involved in education wanting to help and share and collect resources that are useful to the community are, are more than welcome to use it. Would this replace Moodle or Schoology? Um, you know, I think that you know this is not intended to be a full uh, LMS. Uh, certainly not yet, and then that, that's not our near-term goal anyway. Mm -hmm. um, this is to be used in conjunction. I think that this replaces the need for for you know digital portfolios. This is mm -hmm. a tool that I that. You know, it might replace someone's other um, curation tools if they choose, but I think the real goal of what we're doing with this is to make it very, very simple and easy for students to kind of create awesome work, share it not only with their, their teachers, but share it with the world. Um, uh, so I see Peggy just posted a, a question over there. You can blend creation tools. Absolutely. You can definitely, you know, use Symbaloo as a very good visual start page or use mm -hmm. LiveBinders to cur curate resources and then share them as clips. Uh, it's an easy way. You can even you can even attach them as parts of assignments for kids. So it's an easy way to to, to run that flow. Um, but we're really focusing on the idea that the the content that's generated and shared is is growing more and more as as self generated awesome content that kids are making, which is really great. Will it accept other languages? Here's somebody asking. Can you write with accents in other languages? I believe that's a computer 
based setting. I'm not 100% sure if, if there's a limitation that we've put in for that. Um, uh, we're, we're looking at a solution. We found ourselves becoming very popular in a couple of places around the world that, that are not um, native to the English language. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely looking at ways to kind of meet that need and perhaps uh, you know break it out so that you can have a search by different languages. That's not the, the top priority right now, but it definitely is something we're thinking about because there are times I go to bed and I'll wake up and I'll see a ton of stuff in, in you know in Hebrew or in <laughs> or I'll see stuff in, in Chinese and uh, it, it's interesting. It's great because to, to find out that those folks are using it, but um, you know we want to make sure that there's a you know that it's set up to work with the the, the market that you're in, well, the, the sure. you know language that you're in. Mm -hmm. What's the best way for a third grade class to do group reports on a national park? Set up four separate accounts for the entire class, or one account for each group for each park? I would guess. Oh, okay. Uh, third grade class do group report. Well, you would give all the students the account, so a teacher could set up accounts for all the kids, and then mm -hmm. you can create groups, and then have a clipboard or a collaborative clipboard set up for each of the groups, so that the four students are working together to kind of curate the resources and, and uh, give feedback back and forth uh, mm -hmm. in, in the way of comments. Great. Thanks, Adam. I think those exhaust the questions that I managed to, to capture as we went along that you didn't answer. Well, great. If, and if people have more questions, I'm easy to <laughs> get a hold of. Adam, that was just fantastic. And we all know you, you talk fast, but it's because you have so much to share with us. So thank you so much for doing this for us. And I have a feeling that all of us are going to be going back and watching that recording in slow motion so that we can really, really think about and take a look at what you shared with us. So thank you. We do want to let everyone know that we don't have a show next weekend because Educon Philly is going on and so many of us like to participate that in that and that is a free virtual conference starts on Friday night and goes through Sunday. So hope to see some of you there. Also very excited to let you know our um, Smackdown is coming up on February 1st, we would love to have all of you think about sharing in the SmackDown. Um, it's our end of the year review, so it's a celebration SmackDown where we're going to be celebrating all of the presenters we have had in 2013 and then sharing new tools. You get two minutes to share a tool. So there are two links that you need to use if you'd like to participate. One is a Google form to add your link and why you think it's a great link. And that will be made available to everyone. So if you can't come to the show or if you want to check them out later, all the links will be on that Google Doc. The other is an actual Google presentation where you go in and you add a slide for what you want to share. And all the instructions are on those forms. And Lori will be posting the links for you here in the chat momentarily. So think about. Um, checking it out and signing up to share either a website or a tool or a resource, anything that you would like in two minutes. And on February 8th, we'll be having our featured teacher, so we're always looking forward to those presentations. I want to remind you that Barbara Bray and Kathleen McCloskey have a great webinar coming up called The Motivation Equation. So it is Tuesday, January 21st, and the link is in the live binder if you'd like to um, participate. Right now, uh, as we mentioned very early on in the chat, Steve is still away from Future of Education interviews, but and and just this um, past week, his father passed away, so this is a very hard time for him, but I do want to tell you 
uh, yes, and we are all keeping him in our thoughts and prayers. Um, his dad was a very loved educator, uh, dean of admissions, the dean of all deans, as we like to call him. Um, but Steve has started a new document uh, that you should know about if you haven't discovered it, and it's called the Learning Revolution. And in that one place, he combines all of the webinars, like ours, and the virtual conference announcements, tons of resources. And so take a look at that. They send out one um, email a week. So it's easy to keep up with and really hear the latest, greatest stuff. The most exciting thing is that he is bringing back host your own webinars. Now, if you used Learn Central a couple of years ago, that was a feature that we all loved because anyone can offer their own webinar with a recording and um, it can be any length and any number of participants. All you have to do is sign up, get a spot reserved there, and then uh, agree to make it public because you can't do private sessions. But if you make it public, it's not only a great way for you to do webinars for your own teachers and your own colleagues, but it's also a great way to participate in webinars offered by other people. So be sure to check out the Learning Revolution solution if um, that might be interesting to you. Remember, you can all nominate a featured teacher. It's one of the favorite things we do on our show, is bring you teachers sharing the neat things that are going on in their classrooms. So nominate yourself or nominate someone else, and uh, we fit those in one a month. Also, the survey for today's program will automatically pop up when you log out of the session. But Lori, I, I think we'll be dropping the link in here too for you. You can click on it here and it will open in your browser and be waiting for you. That's the way you request a professional development certificate. So if you'd like a certificate, just fill in that survey with your email address and we'll get it out today or tomorrow for you. Also, you can subscribe to our shows on either video collections or audio collections through iTunes U. And um, the link is CR20 Live iTunes U, a following tiny URL. Thanks, Lori, for keeping up with all those links. Um, it's a great way to view them. You can do your exercise and watch all at the same time. Um, and you can subscribe to the RSS feed from the page if you use an RSS reader. So again, thank you all so much for joining us today. And a huge thank you again to Adam Bellow, both for the tool he, tools he has created and also for taking the time to really share it with us today. So thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you in two weeks for the SmackDown. <laughs>